Rubber dam isolation is not a routine practice in restorative dentistry. The number one reason for that? Dentists complain about the time that it actually takes for them to isolate before they start any operative procedures. We also know that the best way to perform operative dentistry is under rubber dam isolation so that we can control curricular fluid, saliva, or bleeding getting to that critical area, the deep margin. So we've created for you seven tips and tricks that I know are gonna help you accomplish this in a better and faster way. So I hope that you enjoy them. You all know there's two different types of clamps. You know, you have the wing clamps, like the number two clamp, or you have the wingless clamp, like the W2 clamp, W standing for wingless. For operative dentistry, you're normally gonna use a wingless clamp. But as you know, the wings on this clamp are actually made to, to be able to attach them easier to the rubber dam. So I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing with a wingless clamp. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and perforate my isolate black rubber dam. And once the rubber dam is perforated, I'm gonna attach the two clamp just so that you, just to review this with you, right? Because I know you, you know how to do this. So you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna grab the wings of the clamp and you're gonna stretch them until you connect it to the rubber dam. That's how easy it is when you are using a wing clamp. And obviously now you can see that I'm gonna be able to attach my clamp forceps and take this directly into the patient's mouth. Now the question is, how can I do the same thing with a wingless clamp? Because obviously the, wing, the clamp does not have any wings, so how would you attach it? How would you connect the clamp directly with the rubber dam? And the way that I do this is I literally grab the rubber dam and I stretch the rubber dam on top of the bow of the wingless clamp, just like you see me do right here. Now, at this point, the bows, I'm sorry, the, the jaws of the clamp are underneath the rubber dam and you can see it right here. So this is where I then connect my forceps and take this rubber dam now directly into the patient's mouth. This would make it a lot easier. You connect it to the tooth, you let go of the clamp, and now you can stretch your rubber dam around the bow and get it to go to the cervical portion of the tooth and seal that area completely for you. Now in this example, we're gonna use this deniform, and as you can see, we have extracted here tooth number 30. So we're gonna use a clamp we're gonna place a clamp around tooth number 31. We're gonna allow the rubber dam to seal this area between 31 and 29. And then we will, we will also include in our isolation 29, 28, and 27. That is the goal that we wanna accomplish. Now, if you think about this, when you're using a regular rubber dam, this is another six by six rubber dam, non-latex rubber dam. You can see that in this particular case, you have to guesstimate you know, the distance between each perforation. When I teach other dentists how to do this, I always tell them to allow, you know, give themselves 10 to 15 millimeters between perforations when teeth are missing. Now, for the clinical example, I'm gonna use the black Hysolite rubber dam. Now, one of the things that I like about this rubber dam is that it's pre-printed. So we know exactly where our perforations need to be, and we also know exactly which dots not to perforate when teeth are missing. So this is gonna take all the guesswork away and it's gonna make it a lot more simple and uh, faster for us to do. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and perforate for the second molar and then I'm gonna switch the dial and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna allow, I'm gonna jump one dot, which is the first molar and then I'm gonna go to the second premolar, first premolar and the canine. So I added three additional perforations. So as you can see, it was very easy for me to say, okay, to know exactly which dots I need to perforate in order to compensate for the missing tooth. See, we have completed our isolation in a really good way, meaning that there is no tissue exposed. We don't see any pink tissue through our rubber dam, which 
also means no saliva contamination, no saliva coming underneath the rubber dam, no blood coming underneath the rubber dam. So no contamination of our operative field, which as you know, it's crucial during operative procedures. So keep in mind how easy this was just because we have a pre-printed pattern. We know exactly where to perforate. We know exactly where, when and where not to perforate so that we can accommodate for any missing teeth in the arch. So for this tip, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use this portion of the deniform. I'm gonna place a W3 clamp on tooth number 19 and I'm gonna isolate all the way to tooth number 22. As you can see, tooth number 20 and 21 have been literally sectioned almost to the gingival margin, one of them very close to it and one and the other one slightly above the gingival margin. So this is what we consider severely broken down teeth and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna teach you today how to isolate these teeth. So as you can see, we have our operative area isolated, correctly isolated using the Isolate Black Rubber Dam, a W3 clamp and a wedget. And what I also want you to, uh, to observe is that even though tooth number 20 and 21 are literally broken down to the gingival margin, this latex rubber dam has so much retraction potential that you can see that I was able, without an additional clamp, to isolate both teeth. Now, I still need additional isolation because most likely when you're you know, building up teeth, you're even you know, actually doing a core buildup or just a deep margin elevation or something like that, you're, gonna, you're most likely gonna need additional retraction, more than what I can accomplish with this deniform. And this is when this beautiful clamp the B4 clamp that comes out of the Brinker kit from Coteen comes into play. As you can see, this is, this is classified as a retraction clamp. So this clamp is actually meant to push the rubber dam and the tissue apically so that you have more tooth exposed. You know, and this is very useful in those deep margins, uh, you know, when you're doing deep margin elevation or in any deep margin situation. But the beauty of this clamp is that the clamp is, you know, the, the jaws are very narrow they're not as sharp, they're slightly blunted, which actually makes this clamp very easy to push if you need to, you know, push it apically so that it will retract even more. So just to show you clinically how this, this would go, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually put the B4 clamp on the two that has the greatest fracture, or the two that, that is closest to the gingival margin. You can see that I was able now to push that rubber dam more coronal, I'm sorry, more apical, so that you have better access to the, to, to the actual gingival margins of the tooth. I'm gonna do this one more time. Sometimes you have to, you, you, you're gonna have to, with other rubber dams, you're probably gonna have to stretch the rubber dam a little bit with your fingers, just like I'm doing right now, and then sit the clamp in place and let go of the rubber dam. And this again, what's gonna do for you is that it's gonna allow, you can see here, when I move the, the dentiform, you can see how much enamel I was able to expose around the clamp. Uh, you can see it right here. This is full retraction, and that full retraction was accomplished using this B4 clamp. Very useful from a clinical standpoint. I use it almost every day in my clinical practice. Now for this clinical example, I have decided to use a different model. This is a section deniform, and the reason why I wanna use this model is because there's a lot of more teeth in this one compared to the previous one that I have. But the other thing that I want you to see is that on tooth, on this maxillary first molar, you can see, tooth number three, you can see that the gingival margin is covering the actual gingival floor of the preparation. So this is a subgingival margin. We have two more teeth that we're gonna restore, and we're gonna place our clamp, our W3 clamp here, but we want to secure a rubber dam somewhere over here, mesial to the working area, to the operative area, so that the rubber dam is never displaced if the patient decides to you know, either close or move their lip or anything like that. This is important because we, once we accomplish good isolation, we don't want our rubber dam to go anywhere. So the reason why I'm showing you this and the reason why I want to use this specific model is because many of you use non-latex rubber dams like the one that I have right here. And these are great. I mean, these are really good rubber dams. The problem that they have when you compare them to the black isolate rubber dam is that this is a latex rubber dam, meaning this is a more rigid, more stiff. You can see that this is very rigid rubber dam. And I'm gonna show you how easily you can accomplish full retraction to uncover 
this mesial margin on this deniform that you would not probably be able to do by only using or by using a regular non-latex medium rubber dam. So let's get to this. So as you can see, we have now isolated the area. We have our W3 clamp as a retentive clamp on the second molar. We have isolated the first molar, the second premolar, the first premolar, and the canine. At this point, all we need is to secure our rubber dam on the mesial aspect. And the best way to do that, and the easiest way, is by using these wedges. I cut them approximately, you can see these are maybe 10 millimeters long, I have them pre-cutted in my office, and all you have to do is just stretch the wedge and floss through the contact area and let go. Now you have your rubber dam completely secure. This means that if the patient closes, that if the patient sneezes, the, if the patient you know, moves their lip in any way that they can pull or push a rubber dam out of the operative field, this is gonna keep the, the rubber dam in place. This and your retentive clamp. So always think about these two, uh, these two ways of securing or keeping your rubber dam in place. Another thing that I wanna show you is the retraction potential of the latex rubber dam, this latex isolate black rubber dam. Remember when I showed you the model initially, the mesial margin of this first molar was completely covered by tissue. Now here I have not, I don't need to use any additional clamps because as you can see, the gingival margin is completely exposed. Now you have beautiful access to that gingival margin, beautiful clean access to the gingival margin because the rubber dam is inverted correctly subgingively, has pushed that gingival margin more apical, and now you have clean access. There is no bleeding, there is no saliva that's gonna come through that rubber dam. This is how you should perform operative dentistry. In some cases where I have patients that have really tight interproximal contacts, it is hard to push the septa between the perforations through that contact and I have found a solution that I want to share with you. And that's why I have this uh, shaving cream right next to you. By adding a little bit of shaving cream to the, to the perforations, it'll make it a lot easier to go through each interproximal contact when placing the rubber dam in the patient's mouth. And you can actually use this for any type of rubber dam, uh, but I would highly recommend you thinking about it when using latex rubber dam because again, this is more resistant rubber dam, it creates more retraction, and you know, because it's, it's full latex, it, when you have really tight contacts, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to get through them. This is gonna make it very, very easy, and I'm gonna do a demo for you so that you can see it for yourself. After we dispense a little bit of the shaving cream, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use a micro brush, and with the micro brush, we're gonna apply it on the inside of the rubber dam, we're gonna apply a little bit of the shaving cream around each of the perforations, just like you're seeing me do here. Again, this is gonna make it very easy and very easy to clean because again, shaving cream is water soluble. So now you can see that I have surrounded every perforation with some of the shaving cream. So once you have your retentive clamp attached to the abutment tooth, shaving cream is on the other side and you will see how easy it is just to go around. This is like soap. See how easy it makes it, makes it just going around and putting every septa through every tooth, very easy, very fast. And if you have a little bit of shaving cream left over, again, this is water soluble, very easy to wash and rinse in the patient's mouth. I have never had a patient complain to me about this. Actually, they, they appreciate it because it makes it so easy for me to place the rubber dam. I, I rarely have to even floss through each proximal contact because the shaving cream literally makes the rubber dam act as a floss and just pushes through each contact area. A common problem that we're all confronted with when we're trying to isolate multiple teeth for operative dentistry is that a rubber dam sometimes does not invert itself correctly. As you can see here on this model, my rubber dam is actually covering some areas that, I'm, that I need access to. So an easy way that I have found to, to go about this issue is just by using a composite instrument, a, a narrow spatula, you can see how narrow it is, and blunt it so it's not sharp. You don't wanna use anything sharp that can tear your rubber dam. And you know what I do is that clinically I go and I just follow the natural contours of the tooth. And by displacing the rubber dam following these natural contours, you can see how easy it is just to get this rubber dam to invert correctly 
underneath the gingival margin. As we all know, this step is crucial because once we get the rubber dam to invert into the gingival sulcus, we're gonna prevent any cubricular fluid or blood in that sulcus contaminate our operative field. As you can see, we have accomplished a good inversion of the rubber dam. All our margins are completely exposed, clean, and ready to be restored. So when I'm done with my operative procedure and I need to remove my rubber dam, I follow a sequence of removal that is based on three steps. Step number one, I normally remove first the wedget. Step number two, I use a blunted scissor and I cut through the septum between each of the perforations. And then step number three is removal of the retainer clamp and the actual rubber dam. And for this, I'm actually gonna time it to see, you know, clinically how long does this really take. So let's get started. Step number one, removal of the wedget. Step number two, blunted scissor. Stretch the septum of the rubber dam and cut through the septum. Step number three, removal of the clamp and the actual rubber dam. Again, very easy and quick and in under 30 seconds. I know that these tips and tricks can be applied immediately into your clinical practice and help you achieve better outcomes. Thank you for watching.